Welcome to the channel, we're going to look at getting your terrain to a decent standard in a short amount of time. For this I've chosen one of the new Kill Team pieces of terrain. I've chosen this because it has a lot of different detail on it and should about cover any type of terrain you're going to come across. First things first, for this method spraying it black is a must. This is going to put in our shadows and make the rest of our paint job real simple. For extra credit use a can that's almost out of paint and is mostly just whatever the propellant is and just keep trying again and again and again until you get somewhat of an even coat. Once that's sprayed and dried, we're going to use a method called overbrushing to give some colour to our piece while keeping the shadows inside. I have this giant makeup brush that is incredibly useful for terrain and large vehicles. Highly recommend you pick one up. This was like 8 quid on Amazon and there were like 20 in the pack. I said like a lot in that last sentence. Sorry. Now I'm using Incubi Darkness as the first part here. I've taken most of the paint off, but definitely not all. This is more than a dry brush, hence why we call it overbrushing. And I'm applying it very liberally. And naturally the recesses will stay black because you just can't get into those corners with a brush this big. I'm painting this building mostly green, but with black you can basically go anywhere you like. Greens, blues and greys work particularly well. Purple is pretty good too. If you want to do something like a red or yellow, I recommend you start from a brown or tan base. But for this, black is perfect. Moving up to my first highlight colour, I'm going to keep using the same overbrushing technique, so having a bit more paint on my brush than I would for a dry brush, but I'm being lighter with it here so we still see some of that incubi darkness, that darker green underneath. Once that's done, the final highlight is Cyberite Green, and this is just a pure dry brush, and you'll see how much this makes the building pop. Those green layers coming together, and there's very well-defined shadows thanks to that black primer. And that's it, that's the main colour done. And the only thing left is to go in with some grey for the gantries. If you're doing larger buildings, this is just another big brush step, but as this is rather small on this model, I'm only using a Diddy dry brush. You'll see as I'm going, this overbrushing technique is building up a nice streaky, scratchy surface which is perfect for a metallic style of floor. I'm not using full metallics here because I'm lazy. Next up is the highlight which is just Dawnstone and this is just a regular dry brush. Next up is the most time consuming part of this and this is putting on the metallics. Now I'm using Vallejo airbrush metallics with a normal brush because they cover really well and the pigment particles look really good. You haven't got loads of little metal flakes like in lead belcher, it's much smoother and it looks great, goes on really easy. Must have recommend. Now you can do as much or as little as you want with the metallics. I would advise going against too much if you're trying to do this quickly because there are a lot of details on Games Workshop scenery and you'll just be there for hours. So I just picked up some of the main ones, some of the biggest ones and the ones that will draw the eye. The ones you don't cover honestly probably won't even be noticed, apart from you guys who are looking for it right now and probably pointing out all the things I missed. But it's on purpose, I promise, I'm lazy. Next up is to get the metallics an all over wash with Nuln Oil and that's the metallics done. I'm not going to highlight this because it takes a very long time so I'm happy with the metals being that dull oiled colour. Point to note this is the older Nuln Oil, I have no idea how the new one looks. While the shade is dry I'm going to use this pale grey blue from Vallejo to colour in the lights. This is going to be my base for a few contrast paints later, so I'm doing this over the big lights and a couple of the coils on the tower. Why am I using this instead of Wraithbone or Grey Seer? It covers better and does the exact same job. There you go. While this paint is drying, I'm going to use a tan colour to colour in all the skulls, in this case Zandri Dust. Games Workshop terrain, specifically the Imperial stuff, has skulls everywhere, so I recommend picking out a few of the biggest ones. There are these cool 50s style stamp plates that I decided to pick out as well with a nice brass colour. Rune Lord Brass, in fact, and I think they're really cool. Draws a little bit of attention to a quirky feature on this terrain piece. With that done, we're on to the fun stuff. But first, Bram.
So now that the paint has dried on these big lights, we're going to colour them in with some contrast paint. I'm using Blood Angels Red due to its bright nature. You see I have a lot of lights on taller buildings being red to warn aircraft, hey, please don't fly into me. So I made these red. Of course, this is 40k, so I really want aircraft to fly into it. Once that was done, I let that dry and switched to Achillean Green, which is blue, and uh, coloured in these power coils at the top so the little Vox can blast out its Jimi Hendrix or whatever they do in the 41st millennium. Then I threw some Agrax on the skulls because they'd finally dried. The next step was to grab a dry brush, in this case finally a nice clean one, and add some highlight colours around the lights, basically creating some bootleg object source lighting, or OSL. This is very simple to do with a dry brush, and for terrain, dry brush is all you need. I have an airbrush, and normally I would use that, but I didn't want to use it for this video because this is all about speed and doing it quickly and cheaply, and airbrushes are expensive. So I just went through two colours here, one with a general dry brush everywhere and then a lighter one focusing mainly around the lights and the base of the lights where the light would be strongest. I did the exact same thing around the power coils, this time using Temple Guard Blue and Baharoth Blue just to give a bit more colour to the feature. Adding bright primary colours is a great way to draw attention to certain areas of your terrain. It can look a little bit monochromatic so adding colour, great way to make it look different and unique. I then went through and highlighted the skulls with one layer of Yushabti bone. Now this next step is entirely optional but I'm going to paint my control panel here. Painting control panels is something I really enjoy doing and it takes about 15 minutes. Which whilst a fair chunk of time specifically given to this area on a very large terrain piece, I think it's worthwhile because it looks really good at the end. I started by blocking in the primary colours, greens, reds, blues and a little bit of yellow and that makes it really pop. If you can help it, always add in a colour other than just red and green because otherwise it looks like Christmas. Unless you're going for Christmas look. Once the primary colours were down I started adding the highlights and this is where it all starts to tie together. I add two highlights to each of the larger colours, so blue and green in this situation, and one highlight to the blue and yellow. I focus the highlights towards the bottom left of each light or panel because that gives it an ocular effect like light is shining from above. And it gives a subtle bit of shape to each panel so the big circular guy in the middle looks more circular and raised because of where the highlight is placed. Now while this might be a time consuming process and require a good amount of brush control, it's absolutely worth it because it's a spot area that people are going to look at. The rest of the terrain feature is quite monochromatic as we said earlier, so greens, metallics, dark colours. Areas like this will draw the eye and make people think, wow, what a great terrain piece. The final step of highlighting the control panel is to add one dot of white in the top right hand corner of all the screens, dials and buttons and this completes it and really finishes it off nicely. And with that our terrain piece is complete. If you have any suggestions for videos like painting control panels for example, let me know. I've been Sam, see you next time.